What to do, YouTube? This is Ask the Roots. I'm going to review the debut album by the DOC, and basically this album is called No One Can Do It Better, and it came out in the summer of 1989, almost said 1999, but it came out in the summer of 1989. It was a gangster rap staple and a West Coast rap staple. Definitely, this is an album that, depending upon who you ask, was like a five mic, five star album in a lot of ways. I don't know if the source gave it five mics, but I know at least a website I visit frequently, allmusic.com, gave it five stars, which doesn't happen necessarily often. But the DOC is kind of an affiliate of like, he's definitely an affiliate of Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre produces this whole album, and Easy E Executive produced this album, but he's also an affiliate of nwa the group so that's kind of the concept he was kind of in the in the he was kind of in the cahoots with them back in the late 80s and early 90s and stuff and it's really terribly unfortunate that he went through that car crash because you know basically that was what sabotaged him from putting out further records and he probably would have been like another staple originally he was supposed to be well i, I I mean, he had a lot to do with Dr. Dre's The Chronic album and somewhat to do with Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style project, but just to kind of say and stuff that he was, def he was definitely a Dr. Dre affiliate and it's just the stuff that they probably could have done. It's like a whole different scenario as to what could have happened had the DOC been around and not had his injuries to the point where he could have continued making music because this album was really only out this album was really only out for about four or five months or so before he had his injuries. So, of course, his career was pretty much, like, curbed immediately. I mean, he did eventually put out other albums, but this is always seen as the one that was, like, the most heralded. And it really, I mean, it just came onto the scene largely. It just massively came on the scene. It was just a great kind of apex of a project. And it was definitely, like, a pretty... For like a roundabout, like Dr. Dre was definitely a central figure in West Coast rap, but I feel like this guy definitely would have been that way also had he kept going with that sort of aspect. It just had some really, it really had some powerful vibes on here that particularly made it quite the tour de force around this time. So this is definitely like a central kind of album. This was similar like this is up there with like Dr. Dre's The Chronic, Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style and uh, N.W.A. straight out of Compton, especially out of West Coast hip hop. This is one of those ones. And also I would throw in like some public enemy albums like It Takes a Nation of Millions and some of those type ones. In the golden age of hip hop between like 1985, 86 and about 1993, 1994, this was a pretty central project. And I do have to give it credit. Like originally I kind of was wondering about it, but this is kind of an album that helped pioneer g-funk which i do like like this album is not wholesomely g-funk but dr dre was kind of starting to tap into something here that he wasn't necessarily doing on the nwa album from 1988 but this manifested pretty quickly and i just like the concept of it it's definitely a pretty central album in that aspect and it definitely delivered on the front of being able to say that this is a staple and this is too bad that it's so short-lived just because there's a lot of qualities on here that I think the DOC and Dr. Dre could have easily continued to manifest a lot further had that kind of happened. But this album, this album had four singles. The first single was It's Funky Enough. And this is a real hit single. If you've played the game Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you've surely heard this song at least a couple of times. If you've listened to like the radio station Radio Los Santos. But this is just a nice summary kind of highlight. And uh, it's to me, it just kind of comes off as like an evening. To me, it's funky enough, comes off as like an evening kind of city tune. This is very rousy and that type of stuff. I just would have to say about it. This had a pretty, I mean, this is a funky song, and I do like the overall emphasis. The beat is just really kind of slinky and kind of just, uh, this real, this has like a dense kind of vibe towards it. It's probably the best beat on the album, damn near, apart from like Let the Bass Go or The Formula. Those are about the only two other ones that compete with it. This is a song that hit number one on the rap charts. This is a pretty central, like this is the sort of stuff that should have been in whips back in the 90s and in California, that type of stuff. It's just a central California kind of tune. Like when you think of California from the 90s, you think of songs like California Love and gin and juice but this is another one especially from like the early 90s late 80s early 90s this is just one that just seemed pretty central to like california in a lot of ways so i definitely have to give it credit there 
The DOC and the Doctor was the second single, and to me this is an almost song, but I do see it as kind of like a decent midday kind of city tune, and definitely like a DAP song. This is kind of one where things are just kind of getting started, you acquaint with people and that type of stuff, just kind of get the initial pounds and DAP and that type of stuff. There's a lot of city tunes on this album. That's something I like about these late 80s and early 90s kind of California raps albums and such, is they have a lot of just in the city kind of traverse weaving in between the skyscrapers and city buildings and that type of stuff, just going around those type things as far as that's actually kind of concerned. It's just pretty dope to kind of get some of these. But I really feel like the the production, the reason why the DOC and the Doctor is an almost song is because it's just got pretty simplistic production. Nowhere near as like massive as it's funky enough for the formula, but I do feel like it has enough of a decent bop towards it to be able to say that it's a good one. It's just it's good, not excellent, but I do like the concept of this it being like a decent midday city tune. So that one's that. The formula is the third single, and this is like a really lazy The Formula was the third single, and this is one that seemed to usher in like G Funk and that type of stuff. I just would definitely have to say it's got it's got a real lazy kind of tune towards it. It's a real lazy car cruise kind of song. Definitely one to smoke a stogie to, something like a swisher, something like that. Nice grape swisher, sweet, something of that sort, strawberry swisher. But I just would kind of have to say, to me, this is kind of like a way lazier and more emphatic version of like Warren G's Regulate, where Regulate was kind of like a more decent kind of jivey bop towards it, like a high mid-tempo, low high-tempo kind of tune. This one's just a really slow creep, lazy kind of song, and I just like it. It's really got a powerful emphasis, and this is a pretty strong song. De definitely an album highlight, I would have to say. I just was not expecting this kind of tune, but I guess it kind of makes sense that this was kind of a pioneer of like the West Coast kind of G-Funk sound that was on the verge of happening throughout these times. Dr. Dre and Easy e and Ice Cube and the DOC and MC Ren and all them just really kind of did this sort of thing. But Mind Blowing was the fourth single, and this is a really greasy, kind of deep in the city kind of tune. I definitely feel like this one just has like a kind of pl plot. This one kind of has like a plotting piano beat on here, but it works. This is an easy kind of highlight, but it, this is kind of in the same time. It's just kind of just a very simplistic kind of piano beat. It's just really just like simple keys, just kind of minimalist production, but it works. It's just a real kind of greasy beat, and I like it. But that's just kind of the concept. It's another city tune, so I do like some of these as far as that kind of goes. But yeah, I mean, it's probably the least noteworthy of the three singles. Like, I, I do like the DOC. I like Mind Blowing better than the DOC and the Doctor, but the DOC and the Doctor is probably the more crafted single and the more ear catching and just more of a highlight, just more jivey. But I just feel like Mind Blowing probably has the lightly better beat, but DOC and the Doctor is just more crafted for like the singles. So yeah, so. There's 11 songs on this album, and out of the 11, there's actually 13 songs, but there's two skits on here, Community Blues, or Commercial Blues, and then Calm 2, which has MC Ren. So minus those two skits, there's actually 11 songs. So out of those 11, I wound up liking seven. But the actual truth about it is I like five songs plus two almost songs. So that's the concept. So I'll go ahead and list these seven songs for you. So the five songs I recommend would be It's Funky Enough, Mind Blowing, The Formula, Let the Bass Go, and the title track No One Can Do It Better. And the two almost songs would be Lend Me an Ear and The DOC and The Doctor. Basically one of the best beats on this album is the kind of slow key kind of creep of like Let the Bass Go. Yeah, Let the Bass Go had like a real kind of terrific kind of dist, uh G-Funk groove that just felt like a a decent kind of house party bop. I just would have to say it's just a real kind of funky kind of tune. I just really like the really kind of mellow kind of keys on there. This has a nice kind of light guitar licks. I don't know what that necessarily is, but this kind of has like some G-Funk kind of sound. Very similar to the formula, but just kind of another lazy smoke one kind of tune in that sort of sense. That's just a nice one. And then uh, No One Can Do It Better, the title track is basically... An, another nice midday kind of jivey kind of city tune. It's definitely a summertime tune, and this feels very regular. I feel like this one just kind of feels like where some of these songs kind of were city traverse, but they don't necessarily have to be summer, and they don't necessarily have to be like in midday and that type of stuff. But this is just like a, a just a typical kind of 
regular cast, sunny summer day, something like that, 80, 70 degrees, something of that sort. This is a nice hot May, June, July kind of day, something of that sort. Really kind of regular, but just kind of jivey in the same sense also. It's just kind of one of those ones that's just about just having a decent good time, similar to the, the DOC and the doctor, but just a little bit more energy to it, I would have to say. And then the and then the lend me an ear and then lend me an ear really felt like one that public enemy would do this one has a really kind of bee swarm kind of beat this really feels busy and swarmy and that type of stuff this really kind of feels like a city tune for having errands and that type of stuff this is something to kind of do some errands to kind of get your day done and that sort of stuff and this is kind of a more busy sounding and a little bit more got stuff to do kind of one about it but i do like that one and it, this really sounds like something off of the public enemy album it takes a nation of millions i forget the name of the song but there's just a few tunes that are very similar to that one that's kind of the concept about the album so to talk about some of the ones i didn't enjoy like there were a couple kind of bad beats like one in particular was one particular song i didn't like the riff on was beautiful but deadly i mean i like the concept of the doc trying to do rock rap but it didn't seem like he pulled it off as well as like uh run dmc and some of those folks do and like the beastie boys and stuff I didn't really like the grand finales beat. I kind of felt like that was a disappointing NWA feature. It just did not quite stack up well enough. And then Portrait of a Masterpiece was just not a good one. And neither was Whirlwind Pyramid. Yeah, Whirlwind Pyramid and Portrait of a Masterpiece just had really poor productions on there. And this were some real filler sounding tracks and just kind of uninteresting. And just didn't really have that pungent bite as far as trying to be able to do something that really captured attention. Like some of the DOC's best moments on here are definitely songs like It's Funky Enough and The Formula. I feel like that kind of lazy and kind of groovy kind of California sound just needed to be kind of executed with that sort of context. But I'm, I'm talking like I'm going to give this album a bad score. It's just kind of the concept that some of these best moments really needed some more of that type moments. I definitely think the DOC needed like a smoking song, something like that. Definitely like some 40 ounce kind of songs and just some actual dance songs and that type of stuff. I mean... Really, the, the prospect about this album is just the fact that a lot of this, minus like it's funky enough in the formula, there's not really a, an overabundance of like party songs. I mean, there kind of is, but it just has a different, it doesn't full blown come out and say, hey, this is the drink song and this is the dance song and this is like the the car bop and some of those type ones and this uh, is just kind of a different you have to kind of search for it and just be able to pick it out for yourself but i do like the concept of some of these this is a pretty quality album so i'm gonna go ahead and give this album me liking seven songs out of 11 i'm gonna give this album like an eight out of ten i feel like that's pretty solid there's definitely quite a bit on here that i liked and i definitely like the singles like Three out of four of the singles, like I do like the DOC and the Doctor, but I just have to get used to it more. But I do also like Mind Blowing, but I think it's just kind of a tie between which one I like better, the DOC and the Doctor or Mind Blowing. Because the DOC and the Doctor is the better single, and the, the DOC and the Doctor is the better crafted single and such, but Mind Blowing is kind of the better song. So this kind of, that's the concept, but then the DOC and the Doctor is kind of the almost song for me and takes more getting used to. So it's this kind of the concept, but the definite best two songs on this album would be It's Funky Enough, which is just a very excellent highlight just out of California rap music in general, especially out of the 90s. And then the formula is just like a G-Funk classic. So those are two excellent real songs that just nailed it. And they just have that straight California kind of feel that kicks ass. And then the other two singles at least kind of stack up a little bit. But it's just kind of, I feel like this album does have some album cuts, but I kind of feel like the concept about it is it just kind of, I feel like this album does have some album cuts, but they're just not quite as distinct as like I probably would have wanted. Like I feel like the main power behind this album is kind of the singles, but then I would have to say on top of that that you just have to kind of look for it because it is kind of a hardcore rap album. But I do feel like the singles have a lot of power, but the it it does not quite have the widespread kind of classic wholesome album. I feel like for 1990, 1991, it's a classic, but in terms of like nowadays, it kind of is a little bit patchy just because the album cuts just don't stack up as heavily as like the two lead singles, which would be It's Funky Enough and The Formula. So that's just kind of the thing. But the social score, 
as a result of that, I'm going to give like a 6.75 because the singles are decent, but some of them just kind of have a learning curve about them. And I just would have to say that at least two powerful singles that are worth the purchase, but it's just kind of somewhat light on just like overall heavy hitters. And I think you may notice that as time goes along and it could have used some guests. I definitely think I would have liked to have seen the DOC on a song with Dr. Dre or Easy E or Ice Cube or MC Ren or someone like that. So that definitely could have happened. And but this is a pretty decently produced project. Like Dr. Dre did pull out some pretty decent beats on here, especially like Let the Bass Go. It's funky enough in the formula. So there are some solid ones on here, some definitely stellar ones. But in terms of the future, like that's kind of difficult just because the DOC really has not put out more than two albums since 1989. So it's just kind of the concept because of all the problems he had, he just doesn't really do music like that. But it's just kind of the concept that this is definitely a highlight, I would have to say.